What's up, guys? My name's Tyler. Welcome to another edition of The Lawn Review. Today, I thought I'd share with you a couple of my favorite tips and tricks, some of the lessons I learned along the way from cutting countless yards, both commercially and just residentially on my own. Some of the things that I wish I knew right when I got started doing it, some things that would save you a lot of time, money, and a whole lot of effort. a subscriber thank you so much it's been such a fun experience for us getting to know some of you guys more seeing us the same person commenting on videos or people asking us questions it's been really fun so thanks for that if you haven't subscribed already and you want to learn a little bit more about lawn care how to best take care of your grass how to take care of your plants best equipment to use you name it we'll cover it today we're going to cover three major things why we cut our lawn, when to cut your lawn, and most importantly, how to cut your lawn. Might sound funny, but cutting your lawn is completely essential to having a good looking lawn. Doing so correctly will have the single biggest impact on the overall health and look of your lawn. More so than fertilizers, herbicides, you name it, any other product, I, I will challenge you that the most important thing you can do is correctly cut your lawn. If you're doing it wrong, you're just simply not gonna have the results you're looking for. Proper cutting, promotes a dense, and this is important, consistent growth rate of your blades. An improperly cut lawn introduces a myriad of different issues that you could have in your lawn, whether it's weeds, disease, fungus, insects, vermin, you name it. All sorts of issues if you're not doing it right. I like to think of it as like when I go to get a haircut for my own self. Like my hair and my head never feels better. I feel like a million bucks after I go to get a haircut. My hair feels fresh, light, you name it. Like I feel like I can breathe. Well, about two or three months later when it's time to get a haircut again, my hair feels dry, thick, and just like dirty. Consistent cutting does the same thing in my opinion. It uh, like split ends, uh, you know, if you've got split ends on your blades, it's cutting it off. It's making it look clean and, and fresh and not those burnt ends. It also just looks a whole lot better. The American Association of Landscape Architects came out with a study, I remember seeing this a few years ago, that a properly well-maintained lawn front yard can return anywhere from 10 to 13 percent of your home value so it looks great it's healthy and it can save you and make you a lot of money <laughs> now that we have a pretty good understanding of why we cut our lawn uh let's talk about when 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 is the best timing to cut your lawn they're one of those things that could have a huge impact on your lawn if not done at the proper intervals when Frequency and timing of cutting is super important. Um, it can add undue stress to your lawn if you don't do it at the right interval. And it's, it's, it's really important, something you really need to consider when you're cutting. Intervals are key. Making sure that you're mowing consistently and not uh, waiting two weeks or three weeks between cuts is super key. And there's a specific reason why. If you weren't familiar already, there's a one third rule when you're cutting your grass. I'll explain it to you real quick and easy. Okay, so I have two blades of grass right here taken from my lawn. This one is one that I know I'm sharing my dirty laundry, but yeah, it's 10 inches long. This one is about uh, five inches long. So this, and this is tall fescue. So if I were to go cut this blade of grass with my uh, mower that the max height on my mower is four inches so if I'm cutting it here I'm taking off way more than one third of the length of, of the blade of the grass now this one that's properly cut is about five inches so if I cut it on a four inch high blade deck I'm only taking off I can't do that math but I know it's it's less than uh, a third if you take off any more than a third you're gonna be stressing the crap out of your lawn like I said, you're going to need to mow it once a week. I pick Thursdays because there's something awesome about a Saturday morning cup of coffee on my front porch looking at a freshly cut grass. And Fridays, my, my tank is usually empty from the week, and so Thursdays are best for me. But depending on your schedule, just find out which day works best for you. Maybe it's Saturday, maybe it's Saturday morning or late morning or Saturday afternoon or Sunday. Whatever works for you, just pick that day and just stick with it each week. Make it part of your routine. In terms of time of year, usually you're going to be cutting from November, well, from, from March, sometime in March to about mid-November. Sometimes I've had cuts that go into December, but usually you're going to have about, if you're cutting every, every week, 
you should be cutting about 32 times a year. Another thing we wanna think about when we think about timing is the state of the grass itself. Moisture is key, really big deal. You do not wanna cut a wet grass for a multitude of reasons. Number one, your blade will slip and you'll have an inefficient cut. So you'll have, you could have potentially tearing of the grass, which is not good, but you can also have a slip cut. So it's just completely, you know, all the way up. And then right next time you go to cut, you're cutting a whole lot more off. Another thing that's not good. So, but then you also don't want to cut it when it's wet because you could be putting ruts in your yard. If it's super soaked, if you're, if the soil itself and you're, you know, pushing a, a heavy mower over top of it, if you've got a zero turn, just a heavier, more industrial sized walk behind, you can put ruts in your yard that it'll start packing in the soil, which is another thing that's not good. So again, you, you, you do not want to cut a wet lawn. Obviously every once in a while it's okay, but by and large, you should be trying to cut your yard when late morning when most of the dew's burnt off or afternoon when it's pretty dry is, is when you want to cut it. Another point about when, when to cut is the, you need to look at the health of your grass. You want to cut a healthy yard. If it looks distressed, if you've maybe burnt it up with your fertilizer or you're, you're in a drought and it looks just worn out and tired and uh, browned up, you, you definitely give it a break. I know that um, it might grow a little bit, but really if it's browning, it's probably not actively growing. So it's not gonna hurt you. You wanna throw some water on it and really figure out, try and figure out what's going on with it. And we'll have some more videos on how to identify key issues with your lawn in, in terms of brownings and things like that and bugs and all sorts of things. So make sure you follow along just for that as well. So just a quick recap on when to mow. Some of the things you wanna consider are the time of year, you know, or you don't wanna cut in the middle of the winter the frequency, the moisture of the lawn, and the overall health of your lawn. Those are some of the main things that I, I do when I go out to my lawn to see, you know, is today the day? So guys, now that we understand when and why we're cutting our lawn, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty on how. It's absolutely essential that you have the correct equipment to do this job. Gotta make sure you're set up for success. Prior preparation prevents poor performance. So for 99% of us, a trusty old push mower is gonna do the job. Push mower's plenty for a, a half acre to quarter acre yard. Um, whether it's gas or electric, uh, this is probably what you're gonna be dealing with. What I like to do is do a weekly check of the mower when I bring it out. I'm, I'm making sure, I got a gas mower here, so I'm making sure I've got plenty of gas, I'm making sure it starts well, and I'm making sure that the blade is, is sharp enough for the job. If it's electric, you're just making sure that the battery's charged and when you put it in, it works, fires up fine. To make sure the blade's sharp enough, I usually do about one pass or uh, my perimeter cut and I'll inspect the blade, the grass blade that is. Now that I know that my tool's working fine, I usually do a walk through of my grass to make sure that there's no toys or sticks or anything that I'm gonna run over, or tennis balls, golf balls, you name it. I'll just do a quick walk through and make sure I'm not gonna ding up my blade any more than, than uh, is necessary. Another thing to consider when you're setting up your mower, making sure it's set up ready and you're ready to rock and roll, is making sure that the height adjustment is where you need it. Um, most mowers have variable heights that you can cut at. Most of them are about 1.5 inches up to 4 inches. I'll give you a tip. Most of the time, I always mow on the highest setting. Another setting you want to consider when you're setting up your mower is the discharge method. So whether you've got a, whether you're mulching, bagging, or doing a side discharge, 99.999% of the time I'm mulching because it's free fertilizer. Now, if it's been a particularly long um, interval between my, between my last cut, I'll bag just because I don't want a whole bunch of grass clippings matting down the surface, but usually you should mulch. How I like to start my mows is I'll mow a perimeter around the edge. That does two things for me. That makes sure that I, I can inspect the blade the grass blade to make sure that my mower blade is sharp enough. But it also, you know, in, in school when you were a kid and they told you to always color inside the lines, well, mowing a perimeter is kind of like creating your line so that you can color inside of it. Really hard to make good clean turns with a mower like this. I mean, it's just not set up for that. So you're mowing a pass and you gotta turn around and still make sure you're cutting all the way to the end, turning around and coming back and make sure, making sure that you're getting all those blades around the edge virtually impossible. So a good perimeter really helps you out there.
Now that we've got a good perimeter cut, you've got to pick which direction you're going to mow. Just a tip from me, I always change the uh, direction of my mows. So one week I'll mow, I guess you would say horizontally if you're looking at that house from the street. The next week I'll mow, I'll turn it 45 and do a diagonal cut. The next week I'll turn it and do vertical or whichever one I said, I can't remember. I'll do it the um, vertical or horizontal depending on what I did. Uh, two weeks prior and then I'll turn it again and do diagonal again. I'm always changing. Why are we doing that? Because it's decreasing places for grass to get packed down in and but it's also decreasing the potential of like wearing out ruts in your lawn. Gives your grass a chance to to bounce back. Especially important if you've got some slopes or anything like that you're really going to want to change the direction you're mowing. So now that you've mowed a nice perimeter you've decided which direction you're going to cut your lawn now it's time to cut it. This, this is the perimeter that's cut right here. This is uncut. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure that 50% of your mower deck is in the uncut section and 50% is in the cut section. It'll help make sure that you don't have a whole lot of missing blades or uncut blades. Particularly important if you, if you do have to mow in a situation where the grass is a little bit wet. So guys, just a quick recap. It's really important that we understand why we're mowing. It's good for our lawn, it's healthy, it's great curb appeal. Heck, it could even improve the value of your home. But also when, so it's important to understand moisture, it's frequencies, all those things. Very important when we're mowing, and also how. Guys, if you stuck around this long, thank you so much for checking out this week's video. I had a lot of fun putting it together. Hope you learned a little bit how to mow like a pro. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm having a blast with this. If you're not a subscriber, maybe you could consider subscribing. Uh, we're putting out a lot of fun DIY content, a lot of product reviews, a lot of how-to guides. You name it, if it involves your lawn or even anything around your house, we're going to cover it and we're going to help you along, with, along the way. And we might learn something together. So keep cutting and we'll see you next time.